Avatar is in constant communion with Christ. Together they send out vibrations of redemption and have planned the spiritual technique of salvation for this age. The work of these two fully illumined masters, one in the body and one without it, is to inspire the nations to forsake suicidal wars, race hatreds, religious sectarianism, and the boomerang evils of materialism. Babaji is well aware of the trend of modern times, especially of the influence and complexities of Western civilization, and realizes the necessity of spreading the self-liberations of yoga equally in the West and in the East. Oh. You, Swamiji, have a part to play in the coming harmonious exchange between Orient and Occident. Some years hence, I shall send your disciple whom you can train for yoga dissemination in the West. The vibrations there of many spiritually seeking souls come flood-like to me. I perceive potential saints in America and Europe waiting to be awakened. At this point in his story, Sri Yukteswar turned his gaze fully on mine. My son, he said smiling in the moonlight, you are the disciple that years ago Babaji promised to send me. I was happy to learn that Babaji had directed my steps to Sri Yukteswar. Yet it was hard for me to visualize myself in the remote west, away from my beloved guru and the simple hermitage peace. America? Surely these people are Americans. This was the thought as a panoramic vision of Western faces passed before my inward view. I summoned the bewildered faculty and gave the school into its charge. I know you will keep Lahiri Mahashaya's yoga ideals of education ever to the fore, I said. I shall write you frequently. God willing, someday I shall be back. The following day, I received an invitation to serve as the delegate from India to the International Congress of Religious Liberals in America. It was to convene that year in Boston under the auspices of the American Unitarian Association. One early morning, I began to pray with an adamant determination to continue to even die praying until I heard the voice of God. I wanted his blessing and assurance that I would not lose myself in the fogs of modern utilitarianism. At that moment, there came a knock outside the vestibule adjoining the Gurpar Road room in which I was sitting. He must be Babaji, I thought dazed. He answered my thought. Yes, I am Babaji. He spoke melodiously in Hindi. Our Heavenly Father has heard your prayer. He commands me to tell you, follow the behests of your Guru and go to America. Fear not, you will be protected. Kriya Yoga, the scientific technique of God-realization, will ultimately spread in all lands and aid in harmonizing the nations through man's personal transcendental perception of the Infinite Father.
I left India in August 1920 on the city of Sparta, the first passenger boat sailing for America after the close of World War I. Yogananda was able to gain intuitive command of the English language during the trip and even gave a lecture to his fellow passengers titled The Battle of Life and How to Fight It. Banno banno me shaman shaman Giri giri me unnata Giri giri me unnata unnata Sarita sarita chanchala chancha Sarita sarita chanchala chancha Sagar sagar gambi rahe Sagar sagar gambi rahe E Hari Sundar, E Hari Sundar, E Hari Sundar, E Hari Sundar. Tere Charan Parashirshana Mao, Tere Charan Parashirshana Mao. Yogananda stepped into an America that was at the start of the exuberant decade of the Roaring Twenties. arrived at the place where the United States began as a nation, a place where women had just won the right to vote and where transcendentalism had taken root 50 years earlier. A place of both expensive and conservative thought. Upon his arrival, Yogananda headed to the Greater Boston YMCA, where he stayed for a short time. On October 5th, the day before his talk at the Congress, Yogananda and other delegates were taken to Plymouth Rock to visit and commemorate the upcoming 300th anniversary of the Pilgrims' arrival in America. Yogananda moved to Unity House where the Congress would take place. As a result of his speech at the Congress, Yogananda began to be invited to many other speaking engagements around Boston. This is where Yogananda met Alice Hazy who became his first disciple in America and later took the spiritual name Sister Yogmata. When Yogananda saw Alice Hazy walk into the church that day and in a voice told him that she would be the one to help start his Boston Center.
Yogananda was a regular visitor at the Hazy home, where he gave many lectures and classes in the living room. It was here that one of his guru's many predictions came to pass. Once during dinner, Yogananda was served strawberries with cream and sugar for dessert. As quoted in Autobiography of a Yogi, Sir, what a sour fruit! I could never like strawberries. My guru laughed. Oh, you will like them in America. At a dinner there, your hostess will serve them with sugar and cream. After she has mashed the berries with a fork, you will taste them and say, What delicious strawberries! Then you will remember this day in Simla. It was staggering to realize that long ago, Sri Yukteswar's God Tune Mind had sensitively detected the program of karmic events wandering in the ether of futurity. Somerville Square is where Dr. Lewis, one of Yogananda's foremost disciples, first laid eyes on him. As he saw Yogananda cross the street in his flowing orange robe, he immediately identified the Swami as the person Mrs. Lewis had recently met and referred to. Still, Dr. Lewis was skeptical about meeting the yogi. Yet at the insistence of Alice Hazy, a respected friend and ardent truth seeker. He agreed to make an appointment to meet with Yogananda on Christmas Eve at Unity House. Dr. Lewis then posed a question. The Bible says, If thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Can you explain to me the meaning of that sentence? I think I can, Yogananda replied with a smile. Would you please sit on this mat facing me? The other man did so. Yogananda then reached out and touched him on the forehead. Suddenly, Dr. Lewis saw a brilliant light in his forehead. Simultaneously with his vision, he experienced a supernal bliss. He sat for a time unmoving, immersed in deep meditation. Yogananda visited the Lewises so often that a room was set aside for him. He enjoyed cooking and delighted them with elaborate Indian dishes. During this time, he prepared to start his weekly lectures around Boston. Yoga is not magic, Sword swallowing or crystal gazing, but it's the art of super living, as discovered by the ancient sages of India in 1500 BC. If the Western brothers only could learn the methods of the yogis, then they would learn to live 100 years in perfect health, happiness, and great success.
he established his office at Huntington Chambers, where he gave weekly satsangs. In addition to organizing the work for the many upcoming engagements, You people do not sleep correctly and allow your sleep to be disturbed by the mental movies of dreams. You subconsciously worry about unpaid bills and troubles. The reason for lying in this pasture is to keep the internal organs floating in the tray of the chest and abdomen free from any pressure. But by closing the eyes and inner relaxation, I can remain asleep several nights. And by opening the eyes and recharging the body, I can keep awake several days. Now I will go into the state of superconscious bliss by lifting my eyes higher in our relaxation and controlling my heartbeat. Yogananda frequented Copley Square often. At the Copley Plaza Hotel, he gave a lecture on how Oriental methods can help Occidental business. A 
Trinity Church enjoyed playing the organ. And across the park at the Boston Public Library, a most memorable encounter took place. The master received a letter telling him he was quite wrong in sponsoring Jesus Christ in America. Don't you realize, the writer demanded, that Jesus never even lived? The letter was unsigned. A week later, he entered the Boston Public Library. There, the first thing he saw was a man seated on a bench under a large window. He went over and sitting next to him inquired, why did you write me that letter? What, what, what do you mean? What letter? The letter in which you stated that I was wrong in sponsoring Jesus Christ in this country. But, but, but how could you possibly have known it was I who wrote the letter? Let's just say I have my ways, the master responded with a smile. And I wanted you to know that by the same power that led me to you, I know Jesus did exist and was everything the Bible says about him. They continued talking for a while about different spiritual topics.
After a few years of establishing the teachings in Boston, Yogananda heeded the divine call to expand his mission further across the country, a mission that would eventually become a worldwide evolution of consciousness. In 1923, toward the end of his initial stay in Boston, he published a book of poems titled Songs of the Soul, which included the following poem, On Coming to the New Old Land, America. Sleeping memories of friends once more to be did greet me sailing over the sea. Sensing my coming, the pilgrim land to adore. The distant sleeping shore lay in the twinkling night, dim through the vanished light. The breeze wafted strong. Strange thoughts my brain did throng, hopes sweet and richly wrought. A raven wing gloom did perch on portals of my mind to search my soul, my strength to awe. And then with joy, what crowds I saw of phantom friends now come to lend their cheer and end my fear.